This episode is brought to you by Rune. Rune 1.8 is an immersive new music experience featuring a new look, new intelligence, and new features designed for music fanatics. Click the link in the description box below for more information. Welcome back to another Dear John video in which we dig into the comments that you find people left underneath a recent video. Now last weekend we published a video about three different headphones and those three different headphones were connected to a topping DAC slash headphone amp and were fed by a WIM mini network streamer which is why it was called a $500 kick-ass headphone system but I ended up doing three because I couldn't really decide on which headphones I wanted to choose so I just thought screw it I'm just going to put all three of these headphones into this video and to my surprise that most recent video about affordable headphone setups did extremely well in terms of views I think it's over 60,000 views already and that's after what five days which is a surprise and I explain why it's a surprise later on in this video because I want to give you my thoughts about covering headphones on this channel. But in this video, we, I'm gonna pull out 10 comments from the hundreds that were left underneath that video. Some of them, well actually the last three comments will relate to three alternative headphones that I could have included, I think they would have been well suited to my video, and could also form the basis for a follow-up in terms of like, yeah, another kick-ass $500 headphone system, or three of them rather. But we start, well, with comments that relate to the music featured in that headphone video. The first one relates to Max Cooper and that EP, the binaural recording EP that I recommended. And Hollis Prince writes, you can find this on Tidal. Really awesome stereo imaging. It's a joy to listen to with good headphones. Now I'm mentioning this because when I, did my description box underneath the video, you know, that thing that not many people look at. <laughs> when I put the link in there, I put just the link to the Bandcamp page, Max Cooper's Bandcamp, because I wanted you to kind of buy it, really. But if you're, you know, not inclined to do so, you can stream this Reworks, what's it called, 3D Reworks 001 EP? It's a great, I guess it's a great way to test the imaging of your headphones, really. I don't think it's going to work too well with speakers, but it might, I don't know. And then we come to a second comment, which relates to a, a screenshot, actually, just I had it on my phone in that video, of a compilation called Virtual Dreams, Ambient Explorations in the House and Techno Age, 93 to 97, which was a fairly obscure compilation. It only came out last year or the year before. I bought the CD. There is a vinyl of this, I think, but double CD here. Fantastic. I'll put a link to this in the description box below. Again, it'll be Bandcamp. I not sure that album's on streaming, but a chap called Brian Banowski, or B, no, Beniofsky, wrote that, not gonna lie, that Virtual Dreams compilation, while excellent, was the first archival music collection that just made me feel old. Brilliant collection, though. Yeah, I've got to say, I had, <laughs> had the same kind of response to it, really, when I saw that. I was like, yeah, we're now looking at ambient techno from the 90s in a sort of more nostalgic fashion. But... The reason I'm mentioning this again, or rather I'm highlighting this because I didn't highlight it in the headphones video, is because this is a very accessible sounding compilation. So if you're like curious about electronic music, but don't like all the kind of, yeah, the techno, the techno assaults, the duff duff, as some people call it, or the uh, unce unce, this thing is, yeah, it's just marvelous. It's super melodic, very, very easy to listen to. Virtual dreams, just search for that. Brian went on to say, totally agree that this price is the sweet spot, because I said it was a sweet spot. I have way more expensive headphones, but I return to the HD650 time after time, especially for recordings that benefit from a softening of detail. I recently bought the Biodynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohm edition. In my opinion, 
They're the best I've heard so far for listening to techno and bass heavy electronic music. Brought all the body back to my Steve Roach records, Speedy J's Ginger, and much more. And that was all for 90 euros, he's talking about the headphones. Sounds great on solid state and tube amps. If you ever decide to pick up a tube head amp, check out Felix Audio out of Poland. Yeah, I'm aware of Felix Audio, but they make great headphone amps and tube amplifiers. I'm not so sure they're affordable enough to kind of feature in these sort of more affordable videos, but, but thank you for bringing them to our attention because this is about sharing, right? And then there were a lot of comments about ministry because again, there was just a, a shot of ministries. I think it's called, well, there's different titles for this album, but I know it as Psalm 69. In Rune, it's also titled as, is it the way to succeed and the way to suck eggs? But I know there's some kind of weird ass title. I don't know. I'm not a massive ministry fan. So that's probably why some of you are so surprised. I mean, I'll put the comments on the screen. There's four of them I'm looking at right now. Shout out to NWO by ministry. Thanks for the video. Did not expect ministry cover art. Did not see you into that, especially that album. Yeah, I'm not super into ministry, but in the early nineties when, was it the early nineties or yeah. When Jesus Built My Hot Rod came out, I was like, wow, this is such a, a bizarre single. And that has not Al Jurgensen singing, but I've forgotten his name now, but the, the lead singer from The Butthole Surfers, Ranting and Raving. It's just a great, it's a silly song, but I bought the album on the strength of that and was kind of surprised by the sort of collision of metal and industrial electronica. But it's not for everybody, but... I occasionally do sort of stray into these kind of weird pockets and that's one of them. But I'm not really like a, a ministry fan per se or a Nine Inch Nails fan per se, or I don't know, any, any of those kind of hard rock bands. Metallica, no, nah, not really into it. But I know many of you people are, which is why I kind of bring it up. Now we come to a technical question because this comes from a chap called Grill Olden. And he asks, is there a way to play Apple Music cabled with this rack? I think what he means is the, the topping DAC slash headphone amplifier. Now we have to remind ourselves the topping on the back has inputs for USB, Toslink and coax. So I think the best way to get a hardwired Apple Music situation into this is just to connect a laptop into the USB. You can't do it with a Raspberry Pi because then you'd be relying on AirPlay. So if you want to do high res Apple Music, which I, th I would imagine this is what many people want to do, you have to connect a MacBook. Or maybe you can do Apple Music on a PC laptop or notebook and then connect that over USB. But that's really the only way with Apple Music, I'm afraid. Similarly to this, and I'm, I'm, I'm not singling this chap out to kind of make fun of him, but also to remind you why I chose certain things. Because Bryn Roberts asks, thanks for the video, John. In previous videos, you've used the iFi Zen DAC, which I have. I wonder why you discounted this in favor of the topping. So there's two reasons. So the iFi Zen DAC only has a USB digital input. There's no coax, there's no Toslink. Otherwise, I would have considered it. Because obviously, if we're streaming from the WIM Mini's Toslink output, we need a Toslink input on the back of our DAC. And the iFi doesn't have it. Which is, I think, for me, I love those iFi Zen products and the, the, the range of DACs that they make, but I just wish they would put Toslink on there or maybe coax, but Toslink would be my preference, I think, because then you can hook up a TV, right? Because when the Toslink is there, it also brings TV into the picture. We'll come back to that in a minute. But the other reason I chose the topping was remote controllability from the couch, because even if I had put the iFi Zen DAC in there, to change the volume, I'd have to get up from my couch seat and then go all, all the way over to the Calax unit like an animal turn it up or turn it down, then come and sit down again, which is, I don't know, I'm, maybe I'm just being lazy, but I think that's what remote controls are for, right? So that's why I chose the topping. To a different issue now, Dominic Albers writes, hello, I got the topping amp and I feel the opposite way about the volume knob. I appreciate that the whole front and the knob is aluminium, I think he means the front plate, and I love the click feedback and the fact that it has a knob instead of buttons. So do I. But that is how different everyone is about personal preference. Thanks for covering the topic. Interesting to see your take on a budget head fi system. I was talking in my video about the knob feel and how I don't like it. But obviously Dominic likes the kind of clicky knob feel that he gets from the topping. 
So it's just like, yeah, he likes it and I'm not a fan. But that's, yeah, that's the, be the beauty of hi-fi really is that we, you know, we all have different tastes and things. Uh, okay, next one. This is a somebody who's just called me. <laughs> For me, it is the Sennheiser headband, HD 650 in my case, that gives the sore spot on the top of the head and the Biodynamic DT770 is the most comfortable headphone I own. Guess that's proof you have to try it for yourself. And it's also proof, once again, that you do have to try these things for yourselves because you're not going to know if you're going to like them until you do so. So at the risk of screwing myself over here, you know, you can listen to people like me all you want, but ultimately you have to go and turn that volume knob, try that headphone on your head for a while to see if it causes you any kind of grief after a couple of hours. I know that's difficult, and I know that recommending Amazon purchases is also loaded with all sorts of environmental and workers' rights issues and things like that. But I've got to say, Amazon is the best way to demo kind of products that were featured in that video because you can return them, no questions asked, after, what is it, 28, 30 days? All right, next comment comes from a chap called Rome Play. And he writes, I prefer the DX5 over the DX3 Pro Plus. And he's talking about the topping DAC headphone up that I mentioned. He writes, it's way more revealing to my ears, tested both and stayed with the DX5. As always, nice video, thanks. Yeah, I'm not surprised you <laughs> preferred the DX5 because it sells for 449 euros. That's over double the price of the DX3 Pro. So I think it's important for when, if you're saying this thing is better for me, it's also important to acknowledge the fact that it is more expensive than what I put in the video, right? Because you would kind of expect that if you spend more, you get better sound quality or greater feature set or both. So please, if you're gonna leave that kind of comment, it's really helpful to all of us, not just me, because I can Google the price, right? I mean, or maybe I know it already, but save us all having to Google the price by putting it in your comment, please. That's a request from me. Oh, okay, this is, this is a kind of a, <laughs> a bit of a silly one. In my video, in the first draft that I published, I said that the Biodynamics have this kind of captured headphone lead that you can't, there's no sort of removable plug. And therefore, if that connection breaks between the cable and the headphone on the ear cup, if that connection breaks, you have to throw the headphones away. And I realize in hindsight, after a couple of comments about that, that was a completely glib thing to say. And I shouldn't say things like that. Because the reality is, is that you don't have to throw the headphone away. I actually cut that little half sentence out of my video. I could do it quite cleanly with the YouTube editor. But yeah, you, you can keep those headphones if the connection breaks. But what you do have to do instead is then buy a soldering iron and buy some solder and buy a replacement cable or, or not. You know, you might not need a replacement cable. Maybe it's just come loose, but you basically need to teach yourself to solder to get this repaired. Or you have to give it to somebody who can solder it for you. And you maybe have to pay them. And that's where the economics of it kind of gets a bit, I don't know, a bit hazy for me because if you've got to buy a soldering iron and teach yourself to solder, that's going to be more than the, probably the cost of the headphone itself. Which is why Rafi Gish wrote for the DT990 as the DT880 and DT770, etc. You can buy a new cable as well as about all other parts from Biodynamic. It's not as easily replaceable as for other headphones, but you don't need to throw the headphone away when something of that headphone breaks. Sure, yeah, you have to learn how to solder and repair it yourself or find somebody who can do it for you. Now we come to the last three comments. Now these for me are the most important comments because this is where many people, not just one person, suggested alternative headphones that I could have chosen. The first one, sells for 340 euros. That for me is why I didn't include it because it was, it was priced out, but I have heard nothing but amazing things about the Hi-Fi Man Sundara. So the B4R says the $300 Hi-Fi Man Sundara is great. In Europe, it's 340 euros. I also have the 6XX and now that they're at 280, I much prefer the Sundara. Great sound stage and well balanced. He's missed out some punctuation here. But if you love bass, then they aren't the best choice. I good amp DAC will realize, oh, a, I misspelt there. A good amp DAC will realize the full potential of the Sundara, but I've also been able to run them off my phone with an Apple dongle. That's interesting and they're still fantastic. 
So that's a good choice. And if I was doing that video again, I probably might squeak the, uh, the Sundara in. I might also squeak this next suggestion in because there were, there were a couple of um, comments that suggested this headphone. One came via Instagram, I believe, as well. So M. Morales writes, AKG headphones are very underrated. People don't pay too much attention to them until they hear them. I personally own a pair of Slovakian-made K712 Pro, and I will definitely take them to my grave. Now, the K712 Pro sell for 209 euros. So they fit into my sort of video's super budget remit, and they look a bit like some other AKGs I remember seeing like 10 or 15 years ago. Then they have a nice sort of orange accent on them. So of all the ones that are suggested, well, sorry, of the three that are suggested here, that's the one I would buy next, just for me, just for my own curiosity. Because the third one, and there were loads of comments about this, right? Maybe, what, 20 comments suggesting this headphone? So I can't read them all, but that headphone was the Sennheiser 560S. And that's 149 euros. So if I were doing this video again, I would definitely, definitely include that headphone as well. So there's the alternative three the Sennheiser 560S, the AKG 712 Pro, and the Hi-Fi Man Sandara. So what we've come to here, with the help of the community of people that comment on my videos, watch my videos, uh, is basically an alternative selection to those that I suggested. So I think that's great. I mean, that's, I really like it when that kind of stuff comes together. Now, one of the reasons <laughs> why I'm not gonna make that follow-up video, at least not yet, is, well, one of the reasons is time. Like, I've got about, I don't know, oh, I don't know how many products, but I had a load of products arrive in the last couple of weeks for me to review, for us to make videos about, and I've got to get them all done before Christmas. All of them. So I'm, I'm just going to be busting a nut to kind of get these videos done in the next few weeks. So that means you're unlikely to see another headphone video apart from a Bluetooth headphone video, which we are going to do. But a wired headphone video may come in January or February early next year. But the other thing that gives me pause... And the other the reason why the success of this most recent video has surprised me is generally headphone videos on this channel don't do very well or they don't do as well as loudspeaker based content but it's not actually it's not really just this channel because i do look at other channels to see how their headphone content does so even looking at i don't know like i'm not going to name names here but another content creator, what a dreadful phrase that is, but another content creator who makes hi-fi videos, occasionally does headphone stuff, and the view count on those videos is way below his normal level. And I, I think that's the same for me generally. But then I go and look at dedicated headphone channels, and the numbers, I think, are comparatively lower for a channel of the same size. So I'm thinking of the two-channel guy and also the headphone guy, and the headphone guy has lower view counts than the two-channel guy who does the occasional headphone content. So a few years ago, like it was seen as that amongst the hi-fi world that headphones would be the savior of the hi-fi world. Like this is a, the gateway to young people. But I don't think it's played out that way. I, I really don't. I don't think headphones are as popular as many people make them out to be. Of course they are popular, but they might not be as popular as speakers for the same money, even though, and this is the kicker, right? You get a better sound from the same money spent on a headphone rig, a much better sound, than you do buying a hi-fi loudspeaker setup. That's the rub, isn't it? You get a better result from headphones, and yet headphones aren't as popular on YouTube as loudspeaker type system content. So that just blows my mind. So that means when I do headphone videos, I have to be very careful about how I do them. I might in future, like when I do full-size home listening headphones, group them into threes. So I might do three headphones at this price point because that seemed to work well. I like doing it. It gives me an opportunity to do the key thing that I like doing, side-by-side -side comparisons. But as I've said many times before, I've become very boring about this actually, is that side-by-side -side comparisons, as useful and as helpful as they are to you, they take an age to do. They take a long time for me. I'm not a fast worker with these things. It takes, maybe I'm just slow, I'm just slow, you know? Slow to respond to differences and to go, oh yeah. You know, maybe somebody else will pick it much quicker than me, but I'm just, yeah, I'm just a bit slow sometimes. So anyway, you know, that's the end of that rant about <laughs> headphone videos. 
if you thought this one was useful, especially the three alternative headphones that you, know, you as commenters, as viewers suggested, then please consider giving this video a like down here. If you like my attitude towards hi-fi headphones and viewer comments, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.